Hey guys, welcome back to Rocky Mountain Homestead. Tonight we are going to be making some jellied cranberry sauce. I have only ever made the whole cranberry sauce, um, so tonight I'm going to can the jellied cranberry sauce. And I am actually tripling this because the original amount in the ball book says it makes two pints. And that's just silly um, to only make two pints. Um, especially with the size family that we have. So I had a five pound box of frozen cranberries from Azure Standard. So what I went ahead and did is tripled the recipe in the description. I'll put the basic amount for the two pint jars, but I'm hoping that this one will make six pint jars over here. I have 12 and three quarters cup of cranberries. Over here, I have six cups of granulated sugar, and then I have five and a quarter cups of water. And it says that you can add in, for the original recipe, one teaspoon of whole cloves and a broken cinnamon stick. I'm not gonna triple the spices because I've never added the spices before, so I'm going to double it and see how that goes. Um, so what I have here is two broken up cinnamon sticks and two teaspoons of whole cloves. So I'm going to tie this up into a little spice bag. And what you're going to do is if you choose this method of adding the spices, you're going to basically um, tie up a little bag out of the cheesecloth, a spice bag, and you're going to discard the spice bag when you're done cooking and the cooking is completed. So let's get started. Okay, as usual, I, like I've said before, my canning videos, um, I like to use my Instant Pot and I use the soup broth setting for mine. That tends to heat up pretty quickly. So the first step you're going to do is add your cranberries and your water, and then you're going to bring to a boil over medium high heat. So my cranberries, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the five and a quarter cups of water that I have. And it is already heating. I just turned this on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my spoon so I can mix this up. This is gonna look really funny. It's a lot of excess, but I did tie this up. I did not have my kitchen scissors. One of my kids misplaced them. And my scissors and my hardware drawer were not there, so I have had to cut my cheesecloth with um, with a knife, which I don't recommend. It's not really a safe method. These cranberries were also right from the freezer. It is totally fine to use cranberries from the freezer for this. I did not have time to thaw mine out, so I'm just gonna get this mixed up, and as it heats, it will break apart, obviously, much easier than it is right now. So you're gonna cook your spices in with your cranberries. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and we are finally at a boil. So I'm actually going to shut my heat off because it does say reduce heat and boil gently but this instant pot will stay hot for quite some time so shutting it just makes sense and just stir occasionally until your skins burst as you can already see a good amount of mine have already bursted but it does say to let it sit at low heat for about five minutes so I'm going to go ahead and set a five minute timer and take you back all right, so this has been simmering for five additional minutes. My spice bag, it held up. It did. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, which says working in batches, transfer the cranberry mixture to a food mill or a food processor fitted with a metal blade and puree till smooth. Um, I'm thankful I have both ball books. The one that I'm using right now is this one, which I love this one, but if you use this one, it gives different directions. 
Um, it actually says to use a food strainer to remove the peels and seeds, which you can see the seeds in there. Um, <clears throat> but the one in the book just says to go ahead and puree in a food processor with a metal blade. So I'm thankful for that because I don't have a food mill or anything that can remove seeds and peels. It's on my list because there's there's been quite a few recipes I could have used that. And there's some recipes I don't do just because I don't own one of those. But I have my, um, my Hamilton Beach food processor and that will do the job. So I'm going to let this cool just a little bit um, because the food mill is you know, plastic, not glass. And I don't want, um, not that it would melt, but I don't want to put something this hot into that. So I'm going to let this cool for just a few minutes and then, um, go ahead and take you back when I use the food processor. Okay. It's been a few minutes. It's still really hot. Um, I think I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and dispose of that spice bag because once the cranberries are done cooking, you can go ahead and discard it. I think I'm going to do this seasoning um, from now on. It smells really good. Not sure how it tastes, but I'm sure once the, once the sugar's added in, um, I'm sure it's pretty bitter right now. So anyway... I'm going to mix this a little bit. I did put it on a cooling rack, which is probably what I should have done because the inside of the Instant Pot is obviously still really hot, so that wasn't a good idea to let it cool off while sitting on that heat plate. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit, get it to cool down, and we'll blend it in the food processor. Okay, it does say working in batches, so I'm going to split up the batches. Um, this is going to be so loud. It is 1.45 in the morning. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, this is my puree button. If it is smooth, it says puree till smooth, um, but you can obviously tell there's still the peels in it. Um, this definitely, wow, thickened up incredibly. Um, yeah, so maybe the mill is helpful to get the seeds and the peels out, but this is... Um, this will work. It'll do what it's supposed to do. Um, it'll be fine. Okay, well, I poured it in there because obviously I can't put it back in the Instant Pot. We're going to do another batch. I'm probably going to do this in thirds. I'm going to get my lid back on. I guess it'd help if I got my spoon out, huh? Get my lid on. I thought I pressed record before, but I didn't. Okay, so I ended up splitting this up into thirds. So, this is the last one. Okay, so I have the mixture. It is thick. It's not, I mean, it's smooth, but there's still, you know, little pieces of peel in there. So now what you want to do, now once you return the cranberry puree to the pan, saucepan or instant pot, um, add your sugar in. So we're going to take our sugar. Remember I tripled it, so it's a lot more than if it was just the original amount. So now you're just going to mix this together. Um, it's going to heat back up. If you're using a saucepan on the stove, go ahead and just heat and bring it to a boil over medium heat, stirring until the sugar dissolves. So you're just going to continuously stir until it dissolves. And then it says to increase your heat to high and boil hard until the mixture begins to sheet from a metal spoon. So basically what you're going to do is once it comes to a rolling boil, 
which is a boil that you cannot stir down. Um, you're going to go ahead and set, what I do is I set a timer for about a minute um, and make sure, you know, I cannot stir the boil down. And then from there, you are going to remove and you're going to test <clears throat> the gel. If the gel stage has been reached, you're going to skim off the foam. So I'll show you what that is when we get there. Walked away and I shouldn't have. <clears throat> that didn't take long at all. So it is still thick, but it is not yet at the sheeting stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this boil a little bit longer. Okay, we are finally at a boil. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and keep stirring. See when you stir and you're not really stopping that boil Sometimes when it's boiling, you can stir and you can actually stop the boil in its tracks, which is called stirring down. Um, but when it is boiling like this, okay, pretty consistently and you're interfering with it and stirring and it's still boiling, and then that's what you call a, a hard boil that you can't stir down. So you are going to want to set a timer for about a minute and just constantly stir. Okay, once you the sheeting stage, I should say, you're going to put a cold metal spoon in. And we are still not quite there. But you see towards the end how it comes off in larger clumps. We are close. So we're going to give it a few more, a few more stirs and see how long it takes. And you're going to keep stirring until you reach that point. We're going to go ahead and remove this from the heat. And then we're going to test our gel. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a test. Another test I like to do. I'll show you real quick. Okay, this is very hot, but I'm going to take one for the team. So you can dip the back of your spoon into the hot mixture. Okay, can you see that? It, I know it's gonna get on my counter, but you run your finger through, and if the top part doesn't drip down, you're usually good. That's what I go by. So once again, I'm gonna show you. Dip the back of your spoon and coat it, and then run your finger through, and you are good. Now what you're gonna want to do is just skim off the top and it's really thick, so it's very easy. All that foam. And I just have a little dish that I've been putting my spoon in set aside. Yeah, you see how thick that is? That's what you want. We're gonna take our foam and dump it in here and just continue repeating the process till the foam is off. Okay, we got a good amount of foam off. I'm going to now go ahead and take my ladle, and I have my jars here I just pulled out of the canner, so they are piping hot as well. And for this um, jellied cranberry sauce, you're going to want to leave a quarter inch of head space. Just gonna check it. Now this does not say, no, nowhere near. This does not say to debubble it, but I'm probably going to anyway. And let's add a little bit more. 
That should be good. Yep, we're good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just debubble it anyway. Okay. Check again. Maybe that's why it doesn't say to debubble because a lot of it sticks to the thing. All right, we are good. I'm gonna continue on with the others. Okay, I'm now gonna dip my cloth into some white distilled vinegar and wipe the rims. So this ball book that I'm going off of says quarter inch headspace. Um, the other ball book says half inch headspace. And to get six of these pints, um, I am in between a quarter inch headspace and a half inch headspace, so I am comfortable with that. All the rims are clean. I'm going to go ahead and now get, I'm sure this is cold water by now, but my lids that were soaking in the hot water. We're going to get these on. I am so glad I tried the foam and I'm really glad that I did the cinnamon and the cloves because it's it's actually really delicious. I think next time I would add in myself, not according to the book, but I would add in maybe a teaspoon of orange zest. This is really hot. So we're going to go ahead and close up our jars, fingertip tight which means only as tight as your fingers can tighten it. Which I always double check mine. The guy always will. It's just something I do. Yeah, these are really hot. Okay, so we were able to get six pints. I'm glad. It'll be nice to add on to the pantry shelf, especially if I don't have time for Thanksgiving to make it homemade. Okay, so my jars are in. They are submerged with over an inch of water. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on and put this on high to bring to a rapid boil before I start my timer. Um, for the basic <clears throat> instructions, you're going to do 15 minutes of processing. For my altitude, you're going to add 15 minutes to it. So my timer will be for 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and finish editing a video. Three minutes. Yeah, it's a crazy hour. I know. Sometimes I hate these late nights because <laughs> I got to get up very shortly. But it has been 30 minutes and I... I'm going to let these sit for five minutes, and then I'm going to pull them. Okay, I have six of these to add to our pantry now of the spiced jellied cranberry sauce. Um, anyway, it is late or early, depending how you look at it. I have four of them that have already popped. Two more left to go, and I'm excited to get these up on our pantry shelves. Anyway... I need to go shower and go to bed.